Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing the reasons why I'm Eric Ten Hag out. Now, granted, it's not so much of a popular opinion because I know in as much as there is a large uh, part of the fan base that wants Eric Ten Hag gone, I also know that there's also another large fan base uh, which is of the opposite opinion. So they feel that we need to give Ten Hag another season, you know, another new structure, see how he do, does and then only after next season we can get rid of him but as i've made it clear throughout the season <clears throat> excuse me i'm completely against that so i thought you know what i need to actually do the um a video explaining why like a detailed video on why i want eric ten Hag to leave manchester united football club come the end of the season which will be on saturday after the fa cup final um so yeah Let's get started. My first reason for wanting Eric Ten Hag to leave the club at the end of the season um, is basically as follows. Um, the negative records that we broke this season as a club. I've got a few negative records that we broke this season. So I'm going to go through them um, on my phone here. So just bear with me as they list them. The first negative record that I'm willing to point out is as follows. Um, Manchester United ended the season with a negative goal difference of minus one. For the first time since 1989 in the top flight campaign. Minus one goal difference. That's not, the end. That's not the end. There's more. Here's another record. Manchester United also had Crystal Palace do the double over us for the first time ever in our club's history. The first game they came to Old Trafford, they beat us 1-0. As if that wasn't bad enough, we went for the second leg away at Selhurst Park. And guess what the final score was? Crystal Palace betted us 4-0. 4-0. Meaning that for the first time ever in the history of Manchester United, we had Crystal Palace do the double over us. Moving on to another rubbish record that we broke this season. Manchester United have our worst ever Premier League finish. Ever. We finished 8th in the Premier League. Eighth in the Premier League. David Moyes even finished higher than that, just so you know. David Moyes finished seventh, and yet fans hounded David Moyes out of this club. You were right to, go, to hound him out, he was rubbish. He finished seventh. He spent less money than uh, uh, flipping Eric Ten Hag. Ten Hag spent 400 million pounds to finish eighth with a minus one goal difference. That's another rubbish record that we broke this season. Let me find another record. This season, Manchester United lost nine home games. Nine home games, I repeat. The last time Man United lost as many as nine games in all competition was 1974. We matched it this season. There's more. Manchester United lost 14 Premier League games this season. 14. The last time we lost that many games was in 1990. Again, I'm not done. There's more. Manchester United didn't find much relief in Europe. They conceded 15 goals through six Champions League group games. 15 goals conceded in six Champions League games, which led to us finishing bottom of the Champions League group stages. This is a group stage which we are, a group stage in which we were against the likes of flipping Copenhagen. Galatasaray and Bayern Munich. I'm sure by now you're thinking, I'm done. But no, there's more. Manchester United lost 19 games in all competitions this summer, or rather this season. 19 losses in all competitions this season. If we lose the FA Cup final, there will be 20 losses in a season in all competitions. Do you know how ridiculous that is? Manchester United this season have scored 57 Premier League goals. That's poor, man. 57 Premier League goals this campaign, which is our third worst total after 49. After 49 goals were scored in 2015-16 season, and 54, 54 goals were scored in 2016-17 season, and we also scored just 57 goals in the 2021-22 season. This has been a poor season, man. I mean, to further elaborate how poor this has been, listen to this stat. Like, like, like seriously, listen to this stat. This, this is the worst of them all. Tenag's side this season allowed a whopping 360 shots. 
in 2024. Not throughout the season, just in 2024, we allowed the opposition to have 360 shots against us. And here's the, the even more damning part. That's more than any other Premier League side this season. More than any other Premier League side this season, including the likes of Sheffield United, Burnley, and flipping Luton Town. If that doesn't tell you that this guy's not good enough, I don't know what is. Like, trust me, guys, there's more records that I could go on about here. So many more which negative records which we broke this season. But for the purpose of the video, I think I've made my point. There's so many negative records we broke this season that I feel are enough to get this guy sacked. Honestly, there's so many more which I didn't even go through. But anyways, let's move on to the next reason as to why I want Eric Ten Hag gone. Now, my next biggest reason as to why I want Eric Ten Hag gone is his poor man management style. I swear Eric Ten Hag has got the worst man management style I have ever seen in any of Man United managers after Sir Alex Ferguson. I can't talk to managers before Sir Alex Ferguson because I wasn't even born yet. But I saw the great Sir Alex Ferguson be able to manage good stars, the top stars, world-class players. I remember at some point we had the likes of, we had a front four of Ronaldo, Rooney, Tevez, Berbatov. He was able to rotate. Even before, um, before like if you see the, the season of the 1999 season, he had the likes of Dwight York and Andy Cole. He managed to keep guys like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer on the, bank, on the bench alongside Teddy Sheringham. He could bring those guys into the game. That tells me that this was a man who could manage the squad. He was able to deal with the big egos. He was able to basically keep them on side, keep them believing in the project. Eric Ten Hag is not that kind of manager. He's far from it, if anything. Far, far, far from it. Eric Ten Hag has shown time and time again that he cannot deal with players with big egos. He has a very poor man management style. We saw him fall out with the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, granted, when that happened, I agreed. Ronaldo was out of line. Walking out of the team live when we were winning the game and refusing to go onto the pitch is disrespectful. And when he went and did, when he went and did the, the interview with that scumbag, what's his name, Piers Morgan, I said, you know what, it's time to get rid, get rid of Ronaldo. I sided with Ronaldo, with Tenag. He went, uh, I promised David De Gea a contract extension. They, they told De Gea they were going to offer him a contract extension come the end of the season. And the decision comes and guess what? Tenag basically says, no, actually, get rid of David De Gea. He wants Andre Onana. His man management style is poor. Jaden Sancho, another one we had a fallout with. Tenag said that Sancho wasn't training hard enough or well enough for the team. Hence, he left him out of the squad completely against Arsenal. Now, I have no problem with that. If the manager feels a player is not training hard enough, they have every right to leave him out of the squad. My problem came when, post-match, after we had just lost to Arsenal, he gets asked a uh, question in the press conference, why is Jaden Sancho not part of the, uh, the squad today? And he says... Uh, because he wasn't training hard enough. All he had to do was, he could have just said, Sancho wasn't fit, or Sancho wasn't okay, or he could have just said, it has to do with my tactics. You don't have to throw him under the bus and say he's not training hard enough. Because I've seen him be inconsistent with that. It's part of his man management style. It's very inconsistent. We saw him with the likes of Marcus Rashford. After losing a Manchester derby, the very same night, he went and party. He went to Belfast and was partying. And then guess what? When Ten Hag was asked about it in the, in the, in the um, press conference, he said, no, it's an internal matter. He'll deal with it internally. When Garnacho went and liked a, a tweet from Mark Aubridge, basically suggesting that Ten Hag had thrown Garnacho under the bus when he replaced him at half time, Ten Hag was asked about it again in, 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 a, in a flipping, what you call, press conference. He said, no, it's an internal matter. So they'll deal with it internally. So why couldn't he have applied this very same principle to Jaden Sancho? That's what you call being a hypocrite and having favorites. He played Anthony week in, week out when Anthony was absolutely rubbish. And hence players like Jaden Sancho were losing their minds saying that, but I believe Sancho literally went and asked Ten Hag, why, is it, why aren't I getting more game time? You keep on playing Anthony and he's rubbish. So Ten Hag didn't like it and he left him out of the squad. Hence, when Ten Hag came out and said in the press conference that the reason why Sancho wasn't part of the squad uh, was because he wasn't training well. Sancho came out and defended himself on Twitter. He said, he put out a statement and said, don't believe the lies of Arsenal. And I side with Jaden Sancho. 
Not because of I'm player FC, no, because I thought Ten Hag was being inconsistent. All he had to do, I had no problem with Ten Hag benching Sancho and dropping him. No problem with that. But you cannot come out to the media and throw your player under the bus. If you're going to do that with Sancho, you might as well do it with every other player. But when it comes to players like Rashford, he chose to protect him. Garnacho chose to protect him. Sancho, uh, what you call Anthony, always protect him. But when it came to Sancho, he hung him out to, out to dry. So he fell out with him. Eric Ten Hag cannot deal with ego players with an ego. Now, I'm not saying Jaden Sanchez was the biggest of egos. Maybe he does. But he's shown he can't deal with it. Now, guess what? You're at Man United, mate. You're not at Ajax where you can only have to get these young players who are 18, 19, and then you can mold them only. You also have to get some big characters. You have to get to some big characters. I was sure there was a time uh, throughout the season where Casemiro was being benched. There were rumors that he had fallen out with Casemiro. And other people are saying, with the way Casemiro has been playing towards the end of the season, he's basically thrown in the towel and he's, he doesn't want anything to do with Ten Hag. So he's just playing nonsense unintentionally. Now, I don't know how true that is, but my eyes tell me that Ten Hag cannot deal with big egos. He, his man management style is so poor. So, so poor. Another reason that I want Ten Hag to go. Favoritism. This is the third reason why I want him to go. He has favorites and it's, he doesn't even hide it. Just as I alluded to uh, a few minutes ago, Ten Hag played Anthony for most of the season on that right wing slot. Sancho wasn't getting a look in. Ahmad Diallo wasn't getting a look in, even when he came back from injury. He just kept on persisting with Anthony, even though Anthony was playing stinkers. Players like uh, uh, Sancho would get the last 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes here and there. Rashford goes out, does parties. He's because he's one of his favorites, he still gets to play the next game week. Ahmad Diallo was rotting on the bench while Anthony was dropping stinker after stinker after stinker. This guy has favorites. He definitely, definitely has favorites. And that's another reason why I feel he needs to go. We can't have a manager who has favorites. I get it. You can like a player. He can be yours, but he can be one of your boys, maybe because you signed him personally. But if a player is not performing, drop them. Give someone else a chance. And I've seen he's got this thing whereby, and I even saw he did it against, um, is it Arsenal? He's got, he'll, he drops a player he doesn't favor against the easy sides. And then when it comes to the big, difficult games, he throws in players he doesn't like. We saw it doing with Ahmed. Brings him on against uh, uh, Arsenal. Where he's been, he hasn't been playing him throughout the season. Ten Hag has got favorites and this has got to stop. It's got to stop. Another reason why I want him gone. Talent ID. He has got some terrible talent ID. We saw him sanction the likes, the signing of... Mason Mount for 65 million pounds. Barely played him. I know Mount has, 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 has had his injuries. But even when he's fit, Ten Hag is refused to start him. He gives him five minutes, ten minutes here and there. He said he wanted Amrabat. We even went and paid a 10 million pound loan fee for Sofian Amrabat. Refused to play him. Kept him on the bench all season. If he plays him, plays him on his left back, which is not even his position. Only now towards the end of the season we see Amrabat being given a chance. Who else did he sign? Andre Onana. I'm sorry, but he is awful. He's been slightly better towards the end of the season, but his shot-stopping ability is so, so poor. Rasmus Hoyland. He sanctioned a £72 million for a striker who had scored nine goals in Italy. I wouldn't have sanctioned that deal. I would have said, if you want Rasmus Hoyland, we will have to get him for a cheaper price. But if he's going for £70 million, I may as well pay £100 million and get someone like Harry Kane. I mean, honestly, Eric Ten Hag, his talent ID is so, 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 so poor. So, so, so poor. Um, but yeah, talent ID being poor and man management, man management style being poor as well. And always fighting with the players and stuff like that. Um, I've, I've, got, I've gotten to the fourth reason why I want Eric Ten Hag out. And this for me is the biggest one. This is for me, I saved the best for last. The biggest reason why I want Eric Ten Hag sacked at the end of the season poor style of play manchester united are literally one of the worst coached sides in the premier league this season we play horrible football horrible horrible football any side we come up against basically dominates us we let every side whether they're a championship side league one side league two side they dominate us they dominate position of the football and we just have to sit back and get hit with shot after shot after shot after shot after shot after shot after shot no wonder Andre Onana is always con uh, conceding goals. Because we concede 
we give, I mean, I mentioned the stat that we faced about 360 shots since January. The more, more than any other Premier League side this season, including sides which are relegated like Sheffield and Burnley and them. We play horrible football. The main reason why I wanted Eric Ten Hag as my main uh, uh, choice when we brought him in is because of the, the beautiful football I saw him playing at Ajax Football Club. Now we bring him to Man United, he tries to tell his style of play for the first two games, he gets hammered 4-0 and loses the other game as well. And then this guy suddenly decides, no, I can't play this type of football here. I can't play this type of football here. I don't have the type of players that I need. So granted, first season I accepted that, you know what, let's play uh, transitional football. We, we defend, we look to hit teams on the counter. It's fine. It's his first season still assembling his squad. His squad. But guess what? Ten spent spent £400 million pounds signing players. So how is he now telling us that he doesn't have the players he needs to play good football that he played at Ajax? He's saying to us that he will never play that type of style, the style of football he played at Ajax because he doesn't have the likes of Frankie de Jong and Matthias de Ligt. He doesn't have the type of players he requires for that type of football. But you spend 400 million. You signed Hoyland for 72 million. You signed uh, Onana, a ball-playing goalkeeper. We don't even play uh, 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 position-based football. You signed Onana for 50 million. You signed Mount for 65 million. You signed Hoyland for 72. You signed Casemiro for 70. You brought, uh, we, we paid 10 million loan for you for, for Amrabat, who you don't even play. We signed Malasia for about 15 million pounds. We signed uh, Bayandia, backup goalkeeper you refused to play. We've, we've given you more than enough players. Now, granted, the players we have are not good enough to play the style of play you played at Ajax. But guess what? You sanctioned the signings. Tenag sanctioned the signings of these rubbish players that we have, that everyone is complaining about nowadays. I get it. They're not good enough. I agree. But guess what? Tenag sanctioned the signings. So he's now complaining about, no, he doesn't have the players to play good football. Well, he sanctioned their signings. That's absolute rubbish, if you ask me. The style of play we play is horrible. There's no one, even the biggest Tenag in I can tell me, we play the worst football in this Premier, in this league. The worst. Even worse than Van Hal, even worse than Moyes. And I've had enough of Eric Tenag and I need him gone. Now, there's people saying to me that Tenag should be given more time until next season. I 100% disagree. Whether we win the FA Cup or not, Eric Ten Hag must be sacked come Saturday night after the FA Cup final, regardless of whether Man United wins or Man City wins. Ten Hag must go. He's not good enough. And the reason I say that we should not be basing off uh, or making a decision whether he stays at this club on whether he wins the FA Cup or whether he loses. If he wins, good. We celebrate as United fans, happy days. As the management, look him in the eye, shake his hand and tell him, thanks for everything, but it's time to go. You're fired. If he loses... Even, uh, again, look him in the eye, shake his hand, sack him. Of course, I want my club to win the FA Cup final. But I don't think we'll win. Because I don't think we have good enough players or a good enough manager. So sack Eric Ten Hag and also get rid of most of these players. But this reason, this video was mostly about Eric Ten Hag and why I want him gone. This manager has proved time and time again he's not good enough. We will never get back to being a top side under this guy. And like I said, whether we win the FA Cup or not, that should not determine whether he's kept at the club. For me personally, I feel he needs to go. I understand other people want to keep him. Fair enough. That's your opinion. But I'm also, there's just as much as other people are entitled to their opinion, I'm entitled to mine. And mine is get rid of Eric Tenag, regardless of whether or not we win the FA Cup come Saturday night. Hopefully we win it and we're celebrating. And hopefully the next day or later on that evening, we hear the goodness that Tenag has been sacked. Because at this point, I want a new manager. I want a completely fresh start. We've got a new board now, a uh, new board which is bringing a new technical director, sporting director. All those guys who are going to be in charge of transfers, not Tenag anymore. Get rid of Tenag. Bring me a manager who will play good attacking football. Whether it's possession based football or whether it's heavy metal football, I don't mind. As long as it's good football that will keep me entertained, then I will be happy. Bring me a good manager. Get rid of most of these players. Refresh the squad, refresh the new uh, coaching staff, and let the club move forward. Eric Ten Hag has had more than enough chance, spent £400 million, pounds, and there's nothing to show for it. My saying is, get rid of Ten Hag come Saturday, and let's move on. Let's start afresh on a clean slate. So like I said, all those rubbish records that he broke this season, the poor style of play, the absolutely poor style of play, the poor talent ID. The big ego that he has, even though he's not a top coach. And the even worse man management style that he has. All 
all these for me, I feel are reason enough to see Eric Ten Hag sacked come the end of the season. Eric Ten Hag honestly needs to leave this club if we're ever going to get to the top of English football. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying whatever manager we get is going to immediately take us to the uh, top of English football. But I know for a fact 100% that Eric Ten Hag is not the man to take us back to the top. Now, for that very reason, I want Eric Ten Hag set ASAP. And yeah, those are my thoughts. Uh, and those are my reasons as to why I'm so adamant that Eric Ten Hag needs to be set after the FA Cup uh, final on Saturday. So yeah, let me know if you disagree with any of my reasoning. Um, do you agree with any of my the reasons why I said it should be sacked? Do you disagree with any of them? Let me know in the chat um, what you thought. Um, and if you haven't already, please like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys soon.